I don't know if he inherited Tyrone Lue's load management process, if he's been hanging out with Kawhi and PG, because if that's the case, you need to be focusing on the TFL and making me more cash by participating in my challenges whenever another fellow owner serves it up to you, Tony. Welcome back to the Flex League, the only fantasy football league whose commissioner fights over Star Wars on the internet. I'm Todd Schaefer with your TFL updates for week 12. Let's get this out of the way right now. Julian lost again. Despite a monster week from new LWF tight end Dalton Schultz and more stellar play from Jalen Hurts, Julian's running back trio of Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, and Alvin Kamara all fell into single-digit scoring territory. Let's go to our sideline reporter Brianna to see if Julian's available for a statement. Thanks, Todd, and thank goodness Julian lost again. We all hate him good for the Flex League and good for America. Julian, how does it feel to have the worst running back luck ever? Ready to go. But there is something we do want to talk about, and that's that you lost this week. Yeah! How about yeah. that? Yeah. How about oh, that, no. Julian? How about fucking that? What are we going to do? <laughs> if you dumb motherfuckers think that there will be another week this season where Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, and Christian McCaffrey all shit the bed, you are lying to yourselves hey, and to hey, everyone it's, else. It's like, it's like Dalton said, man. McCaffrey's only good for 15 points. <laughs> he's best. a 12 to 15 point guy. He's a 12 to 15 point guy. He gave you eight. He gave you eight. So this is just a bump in the road for you then. <laughs> Julian, uh, Elijah Mitchell on the 49ers out in the next six to eight weeks with a knee injury. So, you know, we talked out about in the past how Elijah Mitchell was out carrying McCaffrey and was getting just as many touches, if not more. Now he's out of the equation. Like, literally, McCaffrey made sure Jeff... McCaffrey, LeBron, Jeff Wilson out of San Francisco. He probably kneecapped Elijah Mitchell to, like, soften him up. Like, I... Wouldn't be surprised if he caps 12 fantasy points per game for the rest of the season. Not worried about him at all. Um, uh, the only player that I really was worried about, um, I traded away already. Um, we'll get to him later, but uh, Uncle Lenny does not look like a good investment for you, Dante. So no, I got rid of the player that I'm worried about. No, no, no. Don't, hey, Julian, I don't know if, like, I know you've been sick and everything, so I don't know if that means that you've just been living under a rock during that time or just haven't been keeping up with anything, but I actually traded for his counterpart, Rashad White, as well. So, whatever happens to Fournette, I got it covered with Rashad White. I don't, I don't, I don't pay attention to last place teams, so I apologize. I do want to cut here, Brianna, because Julian does make a good point for once. The Buccaneers' backfield crown is now up in the air after Rashad White filled in primary duties perfectly for an injured Leonard Fournette. The question is, how did TFL owners react, and did they make the right moves to predict or take advantage of the situation? That's fine. I see how it's going to be. Listen, Julian, I know I'm in last place. I, this, this, I feel like I'm, I, I want to sound like a broken record. I understand where I, where I currently stand in this league. I, I, I understand where my placement is in this league. Um... But the thing is, is, I'm I'm trying. I am really trying. <laughs> making trades with the devil himself. Yes, I am talking to you, Julian. And I'm making trades with one of the nicer guys, Kendall. Thank you, Kendall. That was a very uh, kind offer that you gave me. Um, I'm fucking trying to fight back here, and I'm trying to. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make the playoffs. I know that for sure. There's a solid donut, zero percent chance next to uh, chance to make the playoffs in ESPN. No way I'm making the playoffs. Now, I'm just fighting for my for my, for my my dignity. You know, I'm just trying to show that, you know, I'm a, I'm a fighter. I go down swinging. I'm not going to go down. I'm not going to take mm. it. I'm going to I'm gonna do everything I can to, to avoid last place. So mm. that, just like Aaron Judge. Trade, if I got sh trade for Rashad White and the Buccaneers running back, shit. Yeah, I think with, with the flashes that Rashad has been showing, I think he this is his backfield. At the very least on early downs. And with Fournette's injury... And with the capital that he's gaining with Tom Brady in terms of, like, trust in the passing game, I think this is going to be Rashad's backfield for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. um, I think pivoting from Fournette was a good move for you uh, on his name value because he is going to tank. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think Rashad White's just the better all-around running back, too. I think we need to start having that conversation. 
Um, I know everyone's still stuck on, yeah. like, like you said, Julian, Leonard Fournette's name value, but Sean White's been nasty. I mean, he stiff-armed uh, one of the Seahawks uh, cornerbacks or whoever it was in Germany. Always entertaining stuff from TFL ownership, and it looks like AJ and Julian's rivalry is only getting hotter from here. More on that later, though, because we have the Mahomes Depot owner, AJ Caldwell, back with some more good news about some redemption stories we should all be cheering about after week 12. It's the most wonderful time. It's time for the good news with AJ here to tell you about how good you have it in fantasy football. Second half comebacks are upon us and just in time for the playoffs. Jonathan Taylor continues to put up big numbers after a terrible, terrible first half of the season. Was Jeff Saturday the secret ingredient? Let's hope so for your fantasy team. Keenan Allen is back with a fury after his hamstring injury. And when Justin Herbert is his quarterback, he's going to put up huge numbers for the Chargers and for your fantasy team. And finally, Garrett Wilson with the legend himself, Mike White at quarterback, is the number one wide receiver for the Jets and can put up big clutch numbers for your fantasy team come playoff time, either in the semis or in the championship game. Stay tuned for the good news next week, and we'll see you guys soon. Staying positive for now, let's talk about the Chargers' recent uptick. Pretty disappointing performances thus far from Justin Herbert and the Bills of Health of their top two receivers. But Austin Eckler is the best running back in fantasy, and Keenan Allen is suddenly back like he never left as a low-end WR1. I know Jerry's got something to say about that. Rihanna? Thank you, Todd. Jerry, it's got to be pretty exciting to be you right now. It seems your team is clicking at just the right time. Some guys that have awakened, Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen. Jerry! Jerry, your guy, Keenan Allen. The investment's <laughs> paid off, Jerry. The you investment's paid off, Jerry. Oh. <laughs> this man. Goodness. It's about damn time. Yeah. Well, as long as Keenan Allen continues to put up numbers and kind of gets comfortable, because in game number one, he played a limited action. You know, I didn't really expect too much. That's why I didn't even play him. But I was kind of confident moving forward that, okay, maybe he can get me 12 to 15 points. Can I add something? Can I add yeah, something? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. With a 1% with a chance to make the playoffs. But let me tell you something. That's maybe. one higher than me. So. That's all I need. <laughs> that's all I need. So, <laughs> Jerry, 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 there are two games left in the regular season. If you win two in a row and... AJ and Carl drop the next two. Uh, Carl, if he drops one of the next two, you could be in a scrum for the I'm playoffs. I'm in it, baby. I'm <laughs> in it to win it. I'm in it to win it. Should, we, uh... should, should I, should I, should I say second, he's a second half team? He's a second half team, baby. Second half That's right. season. Congrats again, Jerry. Back to you, Todd. Thanks, Brianna. More on Jerry and the Juice Boxers later as we talk TFL playoffs because it is time once again for another spin of the Wheel of Punishment. Five winners, five losers, and Jerry's got another chance to get into the winner's circle. Let's see what happens. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel, baby. Let's fucking spin. All right, I'm, 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 about, I'm about to get the loser of the wheel. Hey, all three, all three of you guys are on that? I'm the only winner here? Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Whoa. Jerry? Jerry's the new Julian. Jerry's the new Julian, and I'm sick and tired of it already. All right, all right. I'm sick and tired of it. <laughs> And Michael B. of the Quad Gods joins the biggest winner circle again. Light work for whoever's getting shafted. Oh, and it looks like Tomer might have some more donuts in his future. Michael, what's in the cards for Tomer? Good evening, TFL viewers. It's your commissioner, Terry, here with an update on this week's challenge. Tomer has gone MIA as of late and will not be able to do... You know what? God damn it! Tomer continues to pass up on being a part of this phenomenal league and making me lose out on even more money. I don't know if he inherited Tyrone Lou's load management process, if he's been hanging out with Kawhi and PG... Because if that's the case, you need to be focusing on the TFL and making me more cash by participating in my challenges whenever another fellow owner serves it up to you, Tomer. You're making this league go broke. Do you think I care about your livelihood? Do you think I care about Clippers reporting even though it's phenomenal work and we all love it? This is the TFL, the Flex League. And I need everybody all in, all hands on deck, 25-8. Stop making me miss out on money, Tomer. I'm tired, Tomer. I'm tired.
Now, because we legally have to allow him to do these things once a week, Julian is back with some more court-mandated fantasy therapy. At least we get to bring the Buccaneers' backfield back around. Let's hope Julian stays on topic. Namaste, my children. Welcome back to Fantasy Therapy, where I, Juju, help you unfuck up your fantasy football season. This week, let's talk about three rookies that you can use in your lineups as the second half of the season keeps going. First up is Christian Watson of the Green Bay Packers, AKA A-Rod's new favorite. Three weeks of plus 100 yards, including one week thrown to by Jordan Love. Christian Watson is quarterback proof, it's official. Next up is Rashad White of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Rest of season, he's in a win-win situation. Uncle Lenny's injured. If the Bucs keep winning, Rashad White is easily their best runner. And if the Bucs lose, they definitely want to show off their rookie. And finally, George Pickens. Probably the lowest ceiling out of all three. However, his schedule is soft as shit coming up. Try to grab all three as soon as you can. Playoffs are coming and you're gonna need some help. More surprisingly wholesome content from Julian. He should lose or get sick more often. Now with the fantasy playoffs looming over everyone's head, we've gotta know more about a hidden MVP for the best TFL team to date. Tomer took a gamble on Josh Jacobs and the number two fantasy running back has paid dividends. Let's get a word from our owners about what the biggest surprise from the fantasy season means for the coming playoffs. Sorry, Julian, to cut you off, listen. No, no, you're fine. I was looking at the, at <laughs> the end of the open window games, right when the the late window was about to start, and I was like, this is cake. Then has had an off day. I'm about to get, you know, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey go off. Oh, no. 86 yard run? 86? Yeah. yeah. I'm done, bro. I'm done. Wow. Like, let's just give him the trophy That's... at this point. Like, that was so disrespectful. Like, 86 yards to the house. I'm done. Come on, Captain 160. You drop 162 points, right? Like you're gonna be good. So here, here's my here's my thing about Vin. This is the shit that pisses me off about about Vin. None of us saw this coming with Josh Jacobs, right? At the end of the day, he is right. He is this year's comeback story. He is this year's running back version of Debo from last year, right? Like someone like someone that you made a gamble on that ended up paying off huge dividends. The shit that pisses me off about Vin is that he was pissing into the wind, shooting in the dark, trying to find a running back that could eventually start for him. He did hit on Damian Pierce and Josh Jacobs. Locked into them. Backed asswards into them. I do think that Josh Jacobs' injury history is going to pop up. I like his utilization is probably going to remain high uh, with an expiring contract. The Raiders are going to try to milk whatever they can out of him. I don't think that this is sustainable. But yeah, the Raiders are going to run ground. Has, uh, <laughs> yeah, he already has an injury history, too. So, I mean, like, even look, just sticking into fantasy, looking at this week with him being questionable, which I hope he doesn't play. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> we'll kind of just see what happens. Like, I, don't, I can't see him putting up damn near another 50-point game. And we have multiple storylines coming to a head here. As it turns out, Jerry has gone from dead last in the division to having a shot in the dark of making the playoffs. Granted, the juice boxers are not in control of their own destiny, but that's got to feel pretty good for Jerry, whose team has gone from the most underachieving in fantasy from paper to the scoreboard. I mean, I feel, I feel pretty good. I'm Vin's, not worried, bro. I'm not worried, bro. <laughs> Jerry, Vin's talking like he's already I'm in the playoffs. Can we, can we stop this? Like, at least win. You gotta have Vin's that mentality, AJ. <laughs> you can't lay down and take it in the asshole, man. You gotta have the mentality. Whoa! Oh, Jerry, that's Jerry, you can't. You can't take it. That's right. You gotta fuck back, baby. You gotta fight back. Gotta keep going, man. Mindset. Winner's mindset, baby. Winner's Jerry, mindset. Jerry, Come on. Lock in. I'll just say this. 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 I'll just say Come on. Of course, any TFL playoff talk would be nothing without Julian and AJ trying to tear each other limb from limb. The championship round we all want to see. How are we feeling, boys? Um, I am scared of Tomer. I am scared of Jerry with Keenan Allen on the roster. Tomer has uh, Justin Herbert, AJ. Um, so... <laughs> AJ just gets so stressed, man. <laughs> So just to be clear, I'm I'm not in that conversation, Julian, of teams that worry you. No, <laughs> you're 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 top two. You're top two. <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I do want to take I do want to take a point right now. 
I was literally making a point about the Chargers right now, and AJ doesn't own any Chargers. AJ is manufacturing beef at the moment. I, come see me in the playoffs. Come see me in the playoffs, I AJ. Wait. I can't wait. Who says you'll make out the first Whoa. round? I think we're all looking forward or hoping that we see uh, Julian and AJ in the first round of the playoffs. I know that's something I would like to see. So AJ has to get there first. He's not over, baby. Plenty of yards with the play. AJ, AJ, I might not get AJ. I might not get out of the first round. You might not get there. <laughs> I'm really worried. And of course, we can't leave out Dante, who lost in Week 12's smallest matchup to Jerry and the Juice Boxers. Has to be pretty painful there, Dante. You look good in Yankees gear, by the way. Discuss the elephant in the room. Yes, I am wearing a Yankee shirt. Yes, I am wearing this like this like compression shirt that's tighter than <laughs> than tighter than something I won't say because I was very inappropriate. And then I have a 76ers and Lakers poster right behind me because for, from this point on, I am a uh, Philadelphia, uh, Philly, Los Angeles Yankees fan. That that's just what it is. And Dalton, is it cold in your room right now? Is it cold in my room right now? Yeah, I just like it, it looks a little bit cold in your room right now. Your shirt's really tight. Yeah, no. Um, oh. <laughs> my nipples are always hard, Julian. Really, it's not the it's not the room. Um, so yeah, I just want to. Just want to tell everyone that you will be seeing me wearing this shirt, this setup, the rest of the way uh, for TFL. So, just wanted to get that out of the way. Um, Good choice, but, Jerry. Yeah, thank you, Jerry, for sending me for sending me such. Um, you know, you know, I got you back, man. Always great friend. Always, I, I, you're, you're amazing. You're a great friend. <laughs> I'm ready for that. Is the most bullshit. I'm not <laughs> I'm rooting for Jerry. Now, if I lose, that all goes is up the window. Rooting, is anyone rooting for me this week? Or like what? Am Dante, I just out Dante, in the dark? I'm, like, Dante, what am I so I'm Dante. always rooting for you, Dante. I pull for Dante pulls this out. Hey, Dante, 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 I will say, um, I am also rooting for you this week. You need to take uh, Drake London out of there, man. <laughs> I need to do a yeah, lot of things, real. Julian. I need to do <laughs> you a need lot to, of You need to put in... Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You need, you need to put in either Rashad White and stack him with Lenny or Jerry or Judy stack and him. stack him with Portland Sun. <laughs> so, you want me to, so do you want me to put in Drake London or the two Broncos receivers? What, I don't have like, many options. Drake London like, will double both of them. Drake London will double like, both of them. What I'm saying is like... Yeah, Drake London starting isn't great. I don't want to start Sutton and Judy. <laughs> Judy's coming. Like, he might not even be back this week, so I might just have to start Drake London. I won't hey, man. Start, I won't start hey. the running back. I won't start him. But Drake London, I mean, I, 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 that's out of my control. Dante. I have to start Dante. Him. Dante. What's your team name? <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> Let's ride, baby! Corbin Sutton and Jerry Judy! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Dante, Dante, we coming for fourth place in the conference, baby. Hey, Dante's gonna Dante. win his best two and like finish in fifth place. That's not what's about to happen. He's gonna shock no. the world. He's gonna shock the world. Oh man, no, I'd be ignorant. I'd I'd be so ignorant if that happened. Yeah, so, <laughs> with JJ and Corbin Sutton. <laughs> I trade. I got Sutton from you, and then I look at my lineup when he's in there, and I'm like, "Wait a minute!" I got Sutton and Judy now. It's like, what am I? But then it's like, oh, again, it's like I can't do like one or the other because I don't have many receivers, so I have to go. Both of I them don't. Because that's. Hey, you know what? Vid made it work with Tyreek Kill and Jalen Waddle. You can make it work with Corlin Sutton and Jerry Judy. You know what they say? You know what they say about Corlin Sutton and Jerry Judy? The second, like, right on the same level as Tyreek Kill and Jalen Waddle. Right?